Stand-up comedy, man. This is, uh, this is a tough business. I don't mean to rain on anyone's parade. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to make money doing this. Uh, my financial situation is so bad right now that I'm being sponsored by a child in Africa. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even pay my bills on time. I don't pay my bills on time. If you don't pay your bills on time, this is what happens. Uh, a couple weeks later, you get another one in the mail that'll be read and it'll say something like, urgent, please pay immediately, right? Like, just because the bill's red, I'm gonna all of a sudden have the money to pay for it. <laughs> it's like, relax, electric provider. I know it's urgent. I'm reading your bill by candlelight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know, I get insecure about like the little money that I make. Like I got stuck in this conversation recently with a couple of wealthy people. And one of them asked me how my investments were doing. <laughs> I, I, I told them both avocados should be right by tomorrow. <laughs> Off, man. Like, if I go to a restaurant, I, I never look at the name of the dish. I just look to see if I could afford it. You know? I'm like, yes, waiter, I'll have a water and a $6.95. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are coming out with a book now, like, like actors, dentists, musicians. It's, it's like the latest get-rich-quick scheme. I was at the bookstore the other day, and I saw a book that was titled, How I Got Rich from Selling Books. <laughs> written by an average guy. <laughs> right? I bought the book, took it home, opened it up. It just read, thanks. <laughs> I've watched a lot of these like antique appraisal shows where people bring their antiques in to find out how much that stuff is worth, right? And this is what I noticed, crowd, that when white people bring antiques in, they're always worth money. <laughs> and when black people bring antiques in, they're not. <laughs> like a white person bring antique in, and the appraiser's like, wow, this is an original copy of the Bill of Rights. It's worth a fortune. And then a black person will bring antique in, and the appraiser's like, wow, this is your grandfather's old heating bill. <laughs> It's not worth anything. <laughs> In fact, he owes 80 bucks. So, <laughs> the, the bill's still red, you know? <laughs> so. I used to work at a warehouse before doing this. Uh, I didn't really care for the job, but like a warehouse job, sometimes it could be like an easier job to get because you don't need like a lot of different skills to work at a warehouse. Like I remember the day I applied, I went in, I asked the boss where the applications were. He's like, they're over there under that box. I go over there, I lift up the box. He's like, congratulations, you got the job. <laughs> it was stressful working there. So you wouldn't think like that job would be stressful, but you know the job is stressful when just to make it through the day, you start humming Negro spirituals. <laughs> and your white coworkers join in with you. That's, <laughs> that's how you know. I worked at this, uh, this shipping warehouse and we had to be careful because the penalty for shipping hazardous material without the proper paperwork was $250,000 or up to 10 years in prison. 10 years in prison. You know, it's gotta be really embarrassing being the guy going to prison for that. You know, he gets there and cellmate's like, so how long are you in there for? He's like, 10 years. Oh, what'd you do? <sighs> I shipped a gallon of paint without a hazmat sticker. <laughs> 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 it's 
cellmate's like, you too? 